So I just had to know, like, am I normal this year on Valentine's Day with what I'm asking for and what does everybody else get for Valentine's Day or do they or don't they or you see the movies and it's flowers and chocolates and diamonds. Yeah. Well, I mean, even when you're saying what you ask for, like I'm not asking for no anything I know. today. I don't so, think I'm getting diamonds this year. Have you got, well, okay. No, okay. <laughs> We're going to talk more about this coming up next. <laughs> oh, no. I, poor Diana is not getting diamonds for Valentine's Day You've today. You've gotten diamonds for Valentine's no. Day. My engagement ring, I got it the day before Valentine's Day. That's the day Tom proposed which we talk about in our minimalist wedding video from Friday, but no, I've never, these are the only diamonds I've ever gotten from a man. Okay. Our, our parents gave us some diamonds. Well, but. I'll, we'll put up the picture. This was how I knew that Princeton was the one. We were actually engaged our first Valentine's Day together. Yep. Um, and he was leaving for India for three weeks for work. And I, we got together, had a quick lunch, and then he went off to the airport and he gave me a diamond necklace and it was beautiful. I cried after he left yeah. and I got home. I was staying with my mom and dad and even my mom texted him and he's like, and she's like, you left Diana in a puddle. And I'm like, <laughs> I think this is real. I yeah. think he's the one. So that's yeah. how I knew. It that's wasn't the like, diamonds, it was him. Yeah, but diamonds were nice. Well, and Diana, like for whatever reason, you usually had boyfriends on Valentine's Day. So she'd have the flowers and the gifts and the chocolates and the teddy bears. The only time I ever had a date on Valentine's Day, which is like really the only time you care about is when you're dating. Yeah. Just once you get married, like, anyways, was that right after we got With engaged? Tom? Yeah. Yeah. Never, I, otherwise I never. He did. I mean, he knocked it out of the park. He, yeah. He and the engagement go. was so fun. So but, again, that was in our video on Friday. Okay, so. but now fast forward. So that story with Princeton was like five years ago. Now we have two little kids and this is how our Valentine's Day is going this year. I sent him a link to the Starbucks mug. I have a ceramic oh, yeah. heart Starbucks mug that I love and Adley was helping me with the dishes, mm -hmm. which basically, you know, the dish sink becomes her little water table, PlayStation, and it occupies her for a half hour oh, while yeah. I'm making dinner. Yeah. Okay, win-win. One of the first times I let her do that, she grabbed my ceramic Starbucks mug and dropped it in our ceramic stink and it, yeah. was, it was over. She learned from that moment on not to touch anything glass. She knows okay. now what's so okay. So yeah, you know it was, it was worth it. We learned our lesson yeah. okay. anyway. So I I found it on eBay because you can't get it at Starbucks anymore, and I sent it to Princeton. This is all I want for Valentine's <laughs> Day. And then I'm just like stepping back. I'm like, have we become this practical? Like, is this? So I just had to know yeah. what's normal because what? Okay. Where are you guys at for Valentine's Day? Um, Tom gets me flowers. Oh, these aren't the ones I bought these myself <laughs> like a week and a half ago. Tom always gets me flowers, and he knows like don't go to a florist like go to Walmart and like these were ten dollars I want the ten to twenty dollar bouquet from Walmart and we're, we're and that's, it. that's and it and you've been doing that for years yeah. actually mm -hmm. and he remembers or you remind him no he remembers yeah, I mean a lot like, of times he goes out the morning up like it's yeah. not like it's a surprise yeah. <laughs> but yeah <laughs> so I googled it because I was like okay are we just old and stale or is yeah. this so here's what I found there's two demographics that basically don't celebrate Valentine's Day okay it's 30 to 44 year olds with young children Children. So that's us. Yep. Or it's couples who've been in a relationship for five to 15 years. Yep. Which is you guys. You've been married totally. 11 years now. 10 years? 11? 10. 12. 11. 12. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so we're, so that, uh, that kind of normalized things. Totally. For me, right? We're kind of in the busy, you know, yeah. kid focused years. Because mm -hmm. even the thought of going out, even on a lunch date right now, and finding babysitters, right. arranging the kids and their naps and everything, I'm like, no. Order in. Yeah. Give totally. me the mug. Make yep. coffee in the mug, but that's not even needed. Okay. Yeah. So, but do you want to know who is going to be buying gifts this Valentine's Day? And maybe you are them. Um, anybody who's been in a relationship two years or under, 70% yeah, of, of those people yeah. will be buying gifts yep. for a significant other. Or the age demographic that's 50 to 65. Yeah. So you've maybe been in that relationship for a long time and you're like, okay. We're not, we don't have to be so pragmatic or practical yeah. anymore. And you know what? I, I want some roses. We can afford it now, right? Well, and I think it's the thing of like, okay, I laid down my expectations yeah. while we have little kids and neither of us had time or energy for it. But you know what? Like, no excuse now. Like, you get me a Valentine's Day gift. <laughs> and, but you, and you want to know what they're buying? I mean, yeah. even the young, younger demographic, the two years or less, flowers, chocolates, jewelry. <laughs> it's still the same. It's all the same. Yeah. It is all the same. Yeah. So Russell Stover at Hallmark 
still own the holiday and yeah. Kate, maybe Kate jewelry. Well, oh, that's probably why I've been seeing like ads for jewelry. Obviously, duh. Yeah. Now I think, and I, it is amazing how I'm like, oh, well, well that's pretty. Or, oh, a different yeah. ring. Or uh -huh. I was like, oh, so okay. Hopefully that'll pass. Then. Well, you're <laughs> getting close. I don't know. You're almost. I don't. Yeah, know. Yeah, three more years. I can have expectations. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So know. how does a minimalist celebrate uh, Valentine's Day? Homemade gift? Nothing. No, nothing. Yeah, no. <laughs> Flowers, I mean something consumable, right? Yeah. Or, or that chocolate. you can enjoy. So Chocolate's very consumable. Cho I know. We're trying to be healthy again right now. Even Adeline was like, no more sugar in the house. It's because, you know, we're like all home. You just eat. Like, you just eat. Yeah. If it's there... You eat it. it gets eaten right now. And even I think your kids have started eating darker chocolate too. Even if you get yeah. like the dark, intense. Yeah, used to be if I said it was dark chocolate, then they didn't want it. Now they're like, oh yeah, I still, they'll not just say it's spicy, you know, yeah. like still doing that. But they know, Corbin knows. He yeah. sees it now and he likes it, so. Yeah. Yeah, consumables though, so that's great. Totally. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we're doing good. And on this day when we're celebrating love, it's a great time to talk about the spiritual aspect. And so many of us are familiar with the passage in 1 Corinthians 13 that talks about love and all of its attributes. Mm -hmm. I want to read it to you in the Passion Translation again because I just feel like it expands on it so well and helps us understand it more. Um, so this is 1 Corinthians 13 starting in verse 4. It says, Love is large and incredibly patient. Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. It refuses to be jealous when blessing comes to someone else. Love does not brag about one's achievements, nor inflate its own importance. Love does not traffic in shame and disrespect, nor selfishly seek its own honor. Love is not easily irritated or quick to take offense. Love joyfully celebrates honesty and finds no delight in what is wrong. Love is a safe place of shelter, for it never stops believing the best for others. Love never takes failure as defeat, for it never gives up. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Do you feel yeah. inspired? I do. I well, I actually like feel that. lowly now. I'm like, <laughs> I haven't been loving at all. Convicted or inspired. <laughs> yeah. And the beautiful place to start with this, and, and you know, as you read it, is to actually imagine that this is describing God. Yeah. That's really, I mean, he is the source of love. He is love. Um, he demonstrated his love to the earth by sending his his son Jesus. You know, it's not that God is without judgment or without contempt for sin or lawlessness or the brokenness in the world, but it's that he loved us so much that he sent his son. And when we, we stay connected to that source of love, then it is possible for us to respond in these ways. And even that very first uh, passage there, or verse, where it says, love is large and incredibly patient. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's just because I have young children. <laughs> or do you know how having young children... Oh yeah, children... no, you need more patience as they get older, actually. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> and, but you know when they're little, it forces you to communicate on a whole new level with your spouse, and often in the heat of the moment, and a lot of times in code, <laughs> yeah. so that they don't know what you're devising to respond to them. And so this is one that I definitely feel. And the word patience there in the Greek is 100% always used toward people and not circumstances. Oh. Oh, yeah. So it's not talking about any of the circumstances in the world right now that might challenge our patience. It's actually talking about our ability to be patient and loving toward the people around us. And this was a story actually in one of the commentaries that I was reading. It was talking about President Lincoln and there was this um, war general named Stanton who had nothing but contempt for Lincoln. He called him a low cunning clown. Wow. Okay. And he said, you don't have to go to Africa uh, to hunt for gorillas. You can go to Springfield, Illinois. <laughs> but Lincoln knew that he was the best man for the job to be his war minister. So he hired wow. him and put him in place. And he did everything he could to treat him with every courtesy. Mm -hmm. He never ever sought to get back at him with words or with anything that would have been in his power to do as president. And so then the story goes on that the night when Lincoln was assassinated, uh, Stanton came into the room where the president's body was taken. He stood down looking on Lincoln's face and said through his tears, there lies the greatest ruler of men the world has ever seen. Wow. And so obviously there you see the beauty and how he won over an enemy through mm -hmm. his patient love, but also for him to be 
be called the greatest ruler of men the world has ever seen. It also speaks to the leadership that also was tempered by that love and by not having to seek to promote himself or his own honor. And that there is always victory in laying down our rights laying down because often even again in that word patience that's used it usually implies that the other is greater mm -hmm. so that you have the power to punish the other person to exhort force or to somehow make them bend to your will yeah. but that in laying that down is always the greatest victory i know we see that in our families we yeah. love to see more of it in the world around us and so it can start with us. Yeah, and I know uh, we talked a little bit about self-care earlier this week, and I do think we have to be in a certain mental state to be able to do this, right? Yep. If we're stressed out and just running behind, I mean, I don't know. I found it almost physically impossible to be patient with Tom when I'm when I'm feeling flustered and stressed out. Oh, yeah. Like it's just not even like within yep. my control, and so. I don't know, it sometimes feels like chicken and egg and just kind of like... And that's where staying connected to the source of love yeah. is, I mean, imperative, right? right? You know, that's the only way. This is otherworldly <laughs> to yeah. be able to be that patient, yeah. that loving, that kind right. all the time. And right. so that's where, uh, you know, we've been following along with the Bible recap, mm -hmm. Bible reading plan. You can yeah. listen to the podcast that goes with it. You can listen to it on your app. You're getting put on worship music. Those ways that we stay connected, that we take a deep breath, that we, and you do have yeah. to care for yourself. If you're yeah, always absolutely. burning both candles at yeah. all three ends, yeah. you're, it's, it's very difficult. The yeah. well is dry, so you gotta fill it up. Mm -hmm. So Father, on this Valentine's Day, Lord, we ask that you would help each one of us to connect to, the, to you, to the source of love. Uh, Father God, we thank you for your gift of love to the world in your son, Jesus Christ. And even right now, we pray for those who haven't come to know him fully or made Jesus Lord of their lives, Lord Jesus, that as you stir in their hearts, Father, that each one of us would commit our lives to you, that we would trust in your Lordship, and that we would have the joy of eternity with you. So I also pray for those who are alone or lonely this Valentine's Day, Lord Jesus. Would you bring meaningful relationships? And even through your Holy Spirit right now, would you bring comfort? Would you just bring a special revelation of your love and care and closeness to those who are lonely or hurting today? And for all of us, I ask that you would help each one of us to grow in patience, to grow in laying down our rights, to grow in loving with our whole heart, sacrificially, selflessly, and with generosity. And I just bless us on this Valentine's Day, and even this month ahead, that this would be a month filled with loving expression toward the world around us. So I bless each one of us now, in Jesus' name, amen.